The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Money Masters. Now, the Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the October 31st, terrific Thursday, happy Halloween edition of the Money Masters show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I'm grateful, grateful, folks, for your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better Money Master and to provide you with the tools that empower human potential. Because living up to our potential, that's something each of us must master each and every day. So let's begin our day with some empowering beliefs about the light of understanding dissolves the phantom of fear. You know, many of our fears are no more real than the eerie ghosts that haunt the houses on Elm Street. And certainly tonight, there's going to be some some haunting going on as we celebrate uh as we celebrate Halloween, you know, the phantoms of doubt, confusion, pain, they're often fabrications of our minds. They may cause us to run away, hide and scream with fright, but when we see the light of understanding, our fears can dissolve. You know the acronym for fear out there, false evidence appearing real? Eleanor Roosevelt, she once wrote, you gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you really stop to look fear in the face. You know, when you look fear in the face... You may see right through it. After all, it is often only a phantom. Remember this. People who enjoy life and radiate happiness, well, for them, fear is nothing. Fear never has nor ever will lead, folks. Hans Margolis, he once wrote, only in quiet waters, things mirror themselves undistorted. For me, that means that only in a quiet mind can you perceive what is real. Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Let's go check out these markets. Let's see if we can understand them. Right now, the Dow is off 52 points, trading out at 15,570. S&P down 6, trading at 1757. Composite down 18 points, trading out at 3912. Russell 2000 off 6 points at 1099. Apple down 265. Google's off 356. Leading the charge, the upside is Carbo Ceramics up 22 bucks. That's up 22%. Harman International's HAR up 12% this morning, up nearly 9 bucks. Expedia up nearly 9 bucks. That's up 17%. Fleet Core Technologies, FLT, up 8% this morning, up 8.53. Perigo Company up 6%. Uh, Power Integration, POWI, up 11%. Capstone Paper up 12%. Faro Technologies, FARO, their ticker symbol up 12.5%. Uh, to the downside, Chart Industries is a leader, down about $12.60. That's off 10%. Priceline joining in on the action should take a charge here shortly, down about uh, tw almost 13 bucks off 1%. Novo Nordisk, no, no, no. They're down 6% this morning. Proto Labs off about 11%, trading down 9 bucks. Uh, Strayer Education off 17%. Visa off about 4%. Oshkosh is having a buy. Gosh, they're down 12% here this morning. Weight Watchers losing five pounds this morning off five bucks and change, down 14%. Our call in number, 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. We can uh, take a look at uh, your stock chart, anything that you would uh, like. Let's start off by seeing what's going on with these markets. Now, let's take a look. Now, well, I've got the New York Stock Exchange chart up on the screen. That's where we're going to start here. And you can see 2A to B equals CD patterns. That had completed, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the larger one, the first one that was coming off of the June 24th lows. I'm just going to clean up the chart here for you. You know, if you're listening on the radio or your mobile device at tfnn.mobi, thank you so much for doing that. Remember, you can catch the live stream of the show. If you go to the home page of tfnn.com, in the upper right-hand side, you'll see a button, three smartphones on it. Click on that. The show will stream live. The archive of this show is on Channel 10. So we know we've had two A to B equals CD patterns that had formed. Didn't really see any bearish uh, configuration, not until yesterday. And yesterday, what did we get here? Remember last week, if you're listening on the shows, we were taking a look at the NASDAQ composite, the NDX 100, and we had what I refer to as key reversal sessions. Well, guess what we got in the New York Stock Exchange yesterday? You got a key reversal session, and what we got was we got a bearish engulfing candle. 
So all in the same day, you got your reversal signals as you were completing a D point of two A to B equals C D up patterns. That says that what we should see is the beginning of a retracement. So if we take a look at that retracement inside the New York Stock Exchange, you'd go from the swing point low of October 9th up to yesterday's high. We take a look at the dead cat bounce, 0.382, says it's got 98.65 written all over it. Then it's got the 0.618 level right around 97.03. I suspect that is where it is going to head to. Now if we take this all the way back, what's at that 97.03 the actual number is 96.95. Yep, it's that last key reversal session that we saw inside of the New York Stock Exchange. It's the high of May 22nd out there. So is it possible that we have seen a key reversal session, a significant high inside the NYSE that marked a, a pullback going down on the June 24th lows, and now we have another key reversal session? Is it something to ignore? Oh, Oshkosh by gosh, of course not. So that's what we've got going on in New York Stock Exchange today. The summation index will turn negative if we see net declining issues. Where's that number? 232 or more net declining issues. That'll turn the oscillator down. Well, you're at minus 970 today. A lot of time left in the trading session. But we got signals yesterday, and my clients and I, in fact, I was on the air at uh, 10 o'clock. I gave a number out and said if we see a close below. I don't remember exactly how I followed that up, but... At 10 o'clock in the morning, my clients and I, we went short this market because we got the signal that it was time to go ahead. We closed out our long trade. We were long the Dow, and we went short the Dow as well out there. We'll see how these trades are going to work out, but we got all the signals that you want for a, at least a retracement here. And we'll just have to gauge just how deep it is. Now, that's on the New York Stock Exchange. The S&P 500, let's go take a look at it as well. So you can see you've got the uh, longer term A to B equals C, D. That's the uh, 1776. And that also, just like the New York Stock Exchange, two A to B equals C, D up patterns. They completed. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate those from my screen as well. It makes it a little bit easier to actually see what it is that we're looking at. And uh, what we can see here, let me get rid of the retracements as we speak right now. So we'll blow this up. If you take a look at yesterday's session, Inside the S&P 500, you will also see a key reversal session. So as we count these on our fingers here, for signals with regard to a market that is topping and time to get a retracement here, we had the NDX, the NASDAQ composite, give us those key reversal days last week. Yesterday, we had the New York Stock Exchange. We had the S&P 500 give us key reversal sessions here. We're getting some additional follow-through this morning to the uh, downside. So now if we take a look at just normal retracement levels inside of the S&P 500, you'll see 1726 is written all over it. That's another 33 points to the downside. That's, not, that's, 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 that's just a dead cat bounce. That's nothing. Nothing even wrong with the S&P 500 to do that. So, again, it depends on whether you, what your trading time frame is, what your trading style is out here. But we got the key reversal session. Now, look. I can't control the markets and or what they are going to do. All I can do is just trade the signals that the markets give to us. If this market closes above 1776, it's going to be off to the races because now we will have had, in the New York Stock Exchange, same thing, you know, with regard to a close over its key reversal sessions out there because we will have had all of the fences that the bears can put up, and this will just tell you just how strong the market is if those areas are taken out. Otherwise, what we should get here, we should get a retracement, and probably more like a .618 retracement inside the S&P 500. That would take us down into about the 1695 level. There is the normal retracement, which will take it, you know, into the .618 retracement, also take you into the bottom of a uh, little rising price channel within the larger rising price channel out there. So I think that's really the target, 1695, but the first target is going to be 1726. We did get the reversal signals and sessions and everything that you needed yesterday. That was inside the S&P 500. Let's go take a look at the Dow. Let's go see what the Dow did. Well, what the Dow did yesterday... Let me just uh, go ahead and move this over just a, a bit. And uh, for uh, uh, I'm just going to leave this here at this stage. It's a 1,000-point consolidation range. It could go up a little bit higher, a little bit lower out there. But what the Dow did yesterday, it got up and over its swing point. That swing point out there was 1,570.958. Got up over it, did it on lighter volume, rejected it, got back inside the consolidation level. And this is going to be the interesting thing here. Because we're dealing with a 1,000-point consolidation. 1,000-point consolidation out here, folks. 
And uh, that says that we could see the Dow do more than the .618 retracement. Let's go take a look at what it is. Well, first, let's take a look at the numbers out here because this is the weak link in the markets. It's not, you know, it all depends on time frames and what you're looking at. It's in a consolidation pattern. That's all that it's in right now. And uh, that makes for a nice trading range out here because the bottom of that trading range is in the 14,007 level. So what we ought to see at a minimum is going to be a pullback to 15,338. That's the 0.382 level. That's nothing. Nothing wrong with an equity doing that. Pulling back to 15,102, nothing wrong. That's your 0.618 area out here. But see, quite frankly, what's the cool thing about the Dow is it a pullback to 14,700. Really nothing wrong there either because it's been trading in a consolidation range. And each time the Dow has gotten down there, what it's been doing, it's been testing those June 24th, uh, area the high volume lows out there it's been doing it on lighter volume so this yellow box is really the range that you could see the dow trading within during this little market uh, timeout if you will so that is on the uh, dow how about the russell 2000 russell 2000 big key reversal session yesterday as well so now what do we got we got the ndx we got the nasdaq composite we got the s p 500 that's given us reversal we've got the dow couldn't break out of the consolidation range and lo and behold what do we get inside the russell 2000 yesterday key reversal session big bearish engulfing candle to boot how big well if you take a look at a one two three four five six seven eight eight trading sessions is what it was able to do. That, folks, is a very significant single signal in the marketplace as well. So what does that set up? That had also completed 1A to B equals CD. We're going we're gonna to say it completed the second one, the larger one as well. 1129 was the official target. Actually got up to 1123. When you're dealing with 1100 bucks, you can cut some slack out there. And that's what Stevie's son here is going to have to do. It's going to have to cut it a little bit of uh, slack. Now, where is it that the... Uh, Russell 2000 will pull back to, well, if you just take a look at retracements out here, but the way that it formed that bearish engulfing candle, it's going to make it back to the dead cat bounce point 382 level uh, pretty darn quick. 1090, 1091 is that area. 1070 would not be out of the question. That's your point six one eight area. You can see this little rising uh, trend line coming off of November 16th. It uh, has only been able to have been busted for maybe a day, a trading session or two. So we're going to keep this trend line out here. We're going to be paying attention to this trend line because as that trend line gets approached, if it is, if, oh, I see some scary music in the background. you got to like that. And, in fact, if we see the uh, pullback here and it gets below that trend line for more than a couple of trading sessions, that will give us a signal. First, a signal that will get back into the October 9th high or low out there which is a thousand and thirty seven but a big reversal signal inside of the russell 2000 it's scary isn't it eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight we'll be right back The host of the Commodities Hour recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow down 61 points right now. S&P is off uh, six. And if you missed it during the uh, first show, during the first show, you know, we, today is October 31st. It's the end of the month. Uh, you always hear the discussion about window dressing. And so, and we've been in the uh, strongest bull market here uh, for quite some time. And the uh, strongest leg of the bull market, in my opinion, uh, in the way that I take a look at the signals on uh, stock charts and just uh, understand the strength that's inside there. Strongest a bull leg run since the March 2009 low. So we went back in uh, this calendar year here, we went back to January, we took a look at each last day of a month, each real window dressing day of a month. Now, my expectation, I'd never done this before, so we did it live. My expectation was that what we would see would be basically nothing but up days. But if you looked at September, it was a down day. August, it was a down day. July it was a sideways to down day. June was a down day. May was a down day. April was slightly up. March was slightly up. February was a uh, a sideways day, and January a down day out there. So uh, don't necessarily subscribe to the theory that the so-called window dressing just means that the market is going to go up. So we got some reversal signals yesterday. We'll see if we get that follow through out here uh, today. And let's go take a look at the. Let's uh, we'll take a look at the currencies. I want to go check in on the euro, Japanese yen. Uh, we're going to. Uh, we'll, we'll, but, but, uh, how about that? We'll start that over. But first, what we'll do is we'll go take a look at the ETF structures out here. These spies. We had that key reversal session inside the ETF structure as well. Bearish engulfing candle. 
Uh, so that was uh, the high yesterday, 177.51. We take a look at retracements from swing point low to swing point high. We'll see the dead cat bounce. It gets us into that 172 and change uh, level. 0.618 takes us down to 169.49. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if, in fact, it breaks this uh, smaller rising price channel that it has been traveling in. But the 172.55 looks to be the first target. Uh, yesterday, volume out here was uh, 140, uh, 140 million shares out there. So far today, it's been 26 million shares. We have been trading for just under an hour, so quick math says uh, maybe a little bit lighter than yesterday unless we see some volume really pick up to the uh, downside here. If we go take a look at the uh, the uh, diamonds, Dow diamonds, diamonds, you know, inside the uh, consolidation uh, zone out here. If we take a look at retracements just simply from low to high. And I think that if the market's going to do a nice little correction here, what we'll really see inside the diamonds is a move all the way back down to the bottom of that sideways consolidation range. That'll take it down to about 146 or so. But 153.08, that's in the cards. That's your .382 retracement. And 157.5 is the 0.618 level uh, retracement of the uh, low to the high out there. And that is in the Dow Diamonds. Let's go take a look here at the IWM. The IWM yesterday, uh, volume off of the uh, highs out here, doing it with uh, 46 million shares. It's broken into and was coming back into the uh, last little sign of strength. And sign of strength will measure that by the little gap up that we saw inside of the IWM. That gap up was on 39 million shares yesterday, moved down into it with 46 million shares. So you got the IWM moving to the downside with some volume out there after completing the A to B equals CD pattern. Now, if we take a look at retracements and numbers here inside of the uh, Russell, you can see that it's uh, close to the 0.382 level, 108.33 so far interest session. We've seen 109.02, so it looks like from the uh, small caps we'll get a pretty decent signal here as to the uh, depth of the uh, pullback. Uh, their target here is going to be the 106.29-ish range. That's your sweet six, uh, 0.618 retracement level, and also it'll break through that little uh, rising trend line. That's the red diagonal line that we see on my screen out here. Let's finish this off by taking a look at the Q's. Then we'll go peek in on uh, Apple, IBM. Let's take a look at some core stocks, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, currency pairs out here. Inside of the uh, Q's, they're holding up pretty well uh, thus far. So it's the Q's that are still a little bit stronger than the other ETF structures. Pullbacks here inside the uh, Q's, uh, if we take a look at from low to high, 80.76 is going to be its uh, first target. That's also where it's going to run into its last real gap up. That was with volume of about 39 million shares so far today on the uh, pullback here inside the queues it's done volume of about 9.2 million shares yesterday made a high with 33 million shares so the queues have got some volume inside of it let's go take a look at a couple of these uh, leading core stocks out here apple's trading down about three bucks right now let's go see what it is uh, doing let's put this on a, a daily chart this is a 30 minute chart here for apple I believe Apple gave us a key reversal session as well. Yeah, it gave us a nice big key reversal session, big old bearish engulfing candle. That was on October the 29th, two trading sessions ago. Still not inside the lower part of its range. That would be a close below August 19th's high, 513.74. We'll be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can't use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customer capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Oh, it's scary out there. Happy Halloween, folks. Here's a trick or treats inside these uh, markets here right now. The Dow trading up 46 points. S&P is down uh, four. Let's go check in on uh, IBM. IBM here trading up just a, a tad right now, trading out at 181. Closed out yesterday at 180.15. No big deal. IBM running into some pretty significant resistance after announcing a, a nice little buyback out here. Nice wide-ranging bar on the trading session with some decent volume coming in on October the uh, 29th. Now, that volume out there, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, the black line going across my screen here, that was the actual breakout uh, volume. Uh, that breakout volume that would take us back into the trading session of January 20th, 2012. Remember, old support becomes new resistance. And that was an area that most certainly was tested and tested and tested. It was a strong area of support. It was a consolidation pattern that I was looking to hold out there, and IBM busted through that. Now we're seeing that this area here is being tested, in the area being like the 182-ish and a bit of change out there. That is now acting as resistance inside of IBM out here. Uh, and has not been able to break up inside that. And so that alone is another signal here to be careful. Breaks up inside it, whole little bit different story. Of course, we know it's got some limited upside potential because it's been traveling with inside a pretty decent uh, descending, <coughs> a descending uh, channel line out here. 
That's what's going on inside IBM. We took a look at uh, Apple. Uh, take a look at Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil was out with uh, numbers. Uh, looks like it. Uh, well, it's about where it opened. Right now, it's trading at eighty nine thirty seven. Interest session that pushed higher out here. Uh, just took on the uh, swing point level from September the eighteenth. That had volume of fifteen million shares. Exxon Mobil so far has traded with good volume, four million shares to the uh, upside, but it needs to close above eighty nine eighty seven in order for it to continue to move higher out there. That's on Exxon Mobil. Let's go take a look at Intel, see what Intel is doing. Intel had formed an A to B equals CD up pattern. Uh, let's go see. Uh, it looks like, okay, so Intel has now completed that one-to-one -one A to B equals CD and uh, has not been. It's also got a bit of a resistance. That's the red, the red line that goes across the bottom of my screen. That red line is the uh, downdraft session from June 20th, which had 63 million shares out there. And you can see it came into that area to form the uh, D point out here. It did it on lighter volume, formed the D point on October the 29th. Uh, did it with uh, 29 million shares. Small bodied candle yesterday, not too shabby. Hasn't exactly given up here, but we do, and we don't have a reversal signal, but we do certainly have the completion of an A to B equals CD out there. I mentioned the currency pairs out here, and this is pretty ominous, <clears throat> certainly ominous if you're a bull out here, no bull about it, and that's that Euro-Japanese uh, yen uh, continues to uh, weaken. That's after forming. This thing is just, this is truly, you know, if I were writing a book, I would certainly, well, I'd have the Euro-Japanese yen inside that book for a number of reasons, but one, uh, take a look at the uh, at the patterns that it forms out here. The most recent pattern that it forms, forms and confirms, was this one point or is this 1.618 butterfly pattern? It already gave us the first signal. Well, today's given us a bigger signal, and oftentimes inside these patterns, price will get back and they will test the original breakdown, breakout area, whichever buy or sell up point. And that's really what took place here inside the Euro Japanese yen. But this thing now forming a huge uh, bearish engulfing uh, candle as it continues to move lower on the intraday chart. That means if we look at a 30-minute chart out here, uh, this thing just is not uh, backing off. It's in that uh, very oversold uh, uh, territory here, but any back off is met with just simply selling, selling, selling out here. This is the euro Japanese uh, yen uh, currency pair. Uh, as you can see, when you form an A to B equals CD, you're already back below the A point out here. Uh, folks, you, you know, when you take a look at pullbacks, and uh, in this case here, you know, it's, it formed, it completed the A to B equals CD, did a little bit more than a one to one before it gave us the uh, reversal signal here. But your normal pullback, this is the 30 minute chart, is where? 0 0.382, 0 0.618. Uh, folks, since uh, 4.30 yesterday afternoon, this thing has uh, uh, just simply made a beeline in the uh, southerly direction out here. Uh, as far as patterns on the 30-minute chart, I'll have to spend some real time taking a look at what it is doing. But uh, this is also, it's not a, that's not a bullish sign out there when you are able to make that 100% move of a uh, move in uh, what basically amounts to about 12 hours' time on this 30-minute uh, chart out here. So um, you know, I'll come back and take a look at what the uh, patterns might. Well, the, really, the, the larger pattern is the one that is going to be key out here, and that means going back into the uh, daily chart. And if we do take a look at the daily chart, you can see the target area. I have it already written on my screen is 130.83, where we should see the Euro-Japanese yen. And the importance there is that from a directional standpoint, this currency pair tracks better than any other currency pair with regard to the U.S. stock market. And it's why you always want to be paying attention to it. Uh, what you're really also looking for is any kind of divergence out here, because on divergence, who's going to win are the dollares. That's right, the dollars, the currency pair will win. So you want to be paying attention for those divergences. There's no divergence here. Everything is kind of lockstep in harmony. And with all the reversal signals that we saw inside each of the indexes out there uh, yesterday, you know, it can't give us better signals, both bullish and bearish. Right now, it's the bearish signal, and if those areas were to be taken out here in the next couple of days, man, what a strong trending market to the upside. But right now, that's not the message of the markets that we are taking a look at. If we take a look at the other currency pairs out here, let's take a look at the U.S. dollar, uh, Japanese yen, really just kind of a sideways uh, day out here. Let's go take a look at the uh, queen. Let's take a look at the uh, euro. Well, the euro, i switch over to uh, to this other chart here. Is how you kind of just feature the euro all together. Uh, this here is the weekly chart. We we went through this earlier. You can see the black descending price channel that it is uh, traveling. That's the one that goes up 
back all the way to 2008. So a significant price channel. Looked like it was going to try to at least go test the trend line, but no, it has been turned around and been turned around uh, big time. So big bearish engulfing candle on the weekly chart. Doesn't end till tomorrow, but right now the uh, signal looks uh, pretty ominous out there. If we take a look at the uh, daily chart out here, the daily chart you can see also the completion of the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. So it did do that completion. So that A to B equals CD taking us into the upper part of the uh, descending uh, 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 trend line out there. And uh, now if we take a look at just normal retracements here, let's go to the daily chart. A normal retracement of an A to B equals CD pattern out here will take the euro down back into the area where it broke out of. So remember, old resistance becomes new support. And what's interesting about this is the dead cat bounce, the point three eight two retracement, is going to take you right into the old resistance line. We'll see if that acts as support. And that level is 1.341. That's this black diagonal line going across the uh, top of my screen out there. And you can see it acted as resistance. You had a bearish engulfing candle back on uh, June 19th. You had a little dark cloud cover candle on August the uh, 21st with a little bit of... Uh, continuation move to the uh, downside out here so it's an area that's been uh, tested uh, and that area is where we'll see if there's any support inside of the uh, euro but if it comes down if it keeps moving down with a wide ranging bar like this uh, it'll be giving us a signal that no it's going to go ahead and truly break through a, a support level now if we take a look at the lower relative strength indicator on my uh, chart down below this thing ought to start losing a little bit of strength a little bit of strength to the uh, downside out here, but uh, right now giving a pretty decent reversal signal. That is on the Euro Japanese yen. Let's go take a look at the uh, pound. Let's go see how the pound is doing out here. Great British pound, uh, U.S. dollar. Uh, let's see, there's the weekly chart. So weekly here, we know that on a, a weekly chart up near a, a consolidation uh, resistance level, that's the black diagonal, uh, black, black horizontal line going across the uh, top of my screen. Right now here on a weekly basis, you're getting an evening star formation. Evening star formation says that the high of October 25th now becomes a resistance area, and it was already up against some resistance out there. Pull back on the, uh, let's take a look at the daily chart. Let's see what the daily chart has to offer for us. Uh, Great British pound, U.S. dollar. Okay, I don't see it, so we'll just change this chart to the uh, daily chart. There we go. Voila, easy to do. Now, the daily chart, it's not too, too bad out here. So the daily chart shows uh, that if so, if you take a look here at the uh, Great British Pound, I'm going to just draw a line across the bottom of my screen here, and this is going to be the area of support that we're going to have to pay attention to on this equity. Nice, big, up-thrusting day, September 18th, courtesy of Ben Bernanke. I don't know what was the courtesy was here on October the 17th. But this is the little sideways consolidation zone. So let's go ahead and put that in the uh, system here. Here's the little consolidation pattern that the uh, Great British Pound Euro, uh, U.S. dollar has been traveling in. So if we see a break of that to the downside, the uh, move to the downside here is going to be equal to or greater than the consolidation pattern. So we'll just go ahead and put this box down here. Now, this let's take a look at the uh, retracement level off of the uh, low out here. The low I'm going to use is July 9th, all the way up to the high that was put in, that little shooting star candle, on uh, October 11th. So you'll see the .382 retracement level can break the consolidation. It's only about mid-stroke, 157. I would say if we see a break of the consolidation level, it's more likely 153. So it would be greater than the actual consolidation zone. But so far here yesterday, today, the candle sessions here, not too, too bad. Just kind of narrow-range bars out there. And we'll see if these consolidation levels inside of the Great British Pound can actually hold out there. Let's take a look at uh, Goldilocks Silver, a light sweet crude. Uh, if we take a look at, uh, uh, here's the 120-minute chart for uh, gold. You can see it has now made the point three eight two retracement after it uh, broke. Well, actually looks like I grabbed the wrong level here. Let's uh, redo that here. I'm going to come off of the actual low. That's a low that was put in. It happened to be 10 o'clock in the uh, morning. And that was on October the 15th. We're going to go from that low to the high that was established on uh, 12 noon, noontime, October 28th. So you can see very close to the .382 retracement, that number being 1319 out here. Uh, if uh, And we're coming into these uh, little, little uh, this should be an area of support. So take a look at this wide-ranging bar at 4 a.m. on October 17th, the high of which is 1320.50. 
If it closes, if gold closes inside 13.2050, that's going to set a uh, move back to at least the 12.93 area. I would say if it closes inside of 13.2050, since that was the uh, true breakout uh, candle and things will come back to the breakout, what we would likely see is gold move all the way down to the .786 level, which happens to be 12.74, and at 12.7370, that also is the 4 a.m. breakout. So we, uh, very important for gold to be able to hold this 13.19 area. Let's take a look at silver. That's coming off of the uh, intraday. That's coming off of the 120-minute uh, chart, I believe. Inside of silver here, it's trying to hold its support area. That's set up by this little uh, rising price channel coming off of the open from June 28th out there. So, so far, so good. Volume-wise today, 36,000 uh, contracts uh, coming back into eh, about 35,000 contracts. That's not necessarily so good. That is the October 17th uh, level out here. We'll see if silver can hold the bottom of this rising price channel out here. Let's take a look here at Light Sweet Crude. Light Sweet Crude, you know, was working off that oversold condition here. Uh, looks like that is done. It's going to take a, a run here, not just for the 95.78 level, but looks like it'll try to make that 2.6 weight expansion around 93.82, of course. Why would it stop there? Probably wouldn't. I would say 91.31. And really, because if it if it breaks through the 0.618 retracement level, and that's going from the uh, low of April 17th all the way to the high that was put in on August 28th out there, you know, once you break back into a consolidation pattern, more improves the likelihood that you're actually going to go ahead and break all the way down to the bottom of it. So that really is now starting to set up about an $85 test inside of light Swede crude. Let's take a look at the 30-year Treasury out here. Again, not really much movement. You know, with the uh, Fed minutes being released yesterday, we really didn't see any. You know, it doesn't look like anybody's taking their thumb off of the trigger. Just really short-bodied candles out here. Inside the uh, 30-year Treasury, not much movement at all. Let's take a look at natural gas. What contract do we have up here? We've got the December contract. That now is below the hammer candle. Uh, that is the September 26th area. You know, when you break a hammer candle, if you're long, you're wrong. And uh, that is suggesting here that we'll see uh, natural gas come back and test the uh, swing point low from August 8th. That looks to be in the area of about $3.46 out there. Let's take a look at some of the uh, sectors with inside the S&P 500. Let's see what we've got going on out here. We've got the energy sector, energy sector yesterday, bearish engulfing, key reversal session, a test of a, a swing point that had 14 million shares. Yesterday's test was on 11 million shares. So it, uh, you've got a failure of a swing point, a key reversal session, and a bearish engulfing candle. That says the energy sector, the XLE, ought to pull down into the bottom of its rising uh, price channel. As far as uh, normal retracements, if we go from low too high out here. That's going to take us into about the 8372, 8266-ish range. That's 8372 is the uh, first stop, and we'll see if the energy sector can hold this uh, rising price channel. This is the one coming off of November the uh, 16th out there. That's on the XLE. Let's go check out the XLK, see what its signal it gave yesterday. It gave a key reversal session as well. That's inside the S&P 500, of course, with it being the number one waiting, it had to give a key reversal session because that's what we saw inside of the S&P 500. Dow's off 42 points right now. S&P off four. We'll be right back, folks. Profits and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. 
you'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Have you subscribed to The Gold Report yet? On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.69% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market makes its way back into positive territory after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. That Dow's off 43, S&P down about three points, composite off uh, five. A request to take a look at FOSL, F-O-S-L, is the uh, ticker symbol. And the question is... Is this a is this setting up as a good short sale? So we're going to take a look at this equity here. We're going to do it on all three, well, at least three time frames. We're going to take a look at the monthly, take a look at the weekly, take a look at the uh, daily. So if we take a look at the uh, week, uh, the monthly chart out here, that's what we're going to start with. Fossil makes a high the week of July 11, 2000, July 31st, July 31st, 2011. Gets up to a price point of 134.98. Very next uh, trading session which is the next month, obviously, August, big old bearish engulfing uh, candle, takes back the uh, prior uh, two months. That indicates that you were significant resistance up at the high, the high being the uh, candle session that it engulfed. And that's the high of July 31st, 134.98. Now, price makes its way back up there, closes underneath it. It's a rejection. That becomes a resistance level. Makes its way back up there. Now, made its way back up there in March of 2012. 
tries it again in April of 2012, tries it one more time in the third time was the charm in May of 2012. Now, as we take a look at the monthly chart out here, most certainly what we're uh, paying attention to is certainly that big down-thrusting candle, big wide-ranging bar from May 31st. But resistance for this equity on the monthly basis is really not this candle session from May 31st. It truly is the area of July 31st. So the question is, is this a good setting up for a good short sale? I would say you would want to be patient and wait for 134.98 to be the level where you would take a look at putting on a uh, short sale. And what you would not want to see is a close above 134.98 on the monthly chart out there. So that's what the monthly chart is communicating to me as far as what you would uh, as far as what you want to do. There's also several continuation. Uh, patterns that are out here that they're to the upside. And the continuation pattern, uh, you know, most Japanese candlesticks are reversal patterns. Some are, are are just simply agnostic. They're neutral. They don't give you any meaning. Some candlesticks that are considered bullish or bearish, quite frankly, I think you should throw in the trash. They're just simply good to know, but they aren't good to trade off of. Well, they're good to know to not trade off of them is really what I should say out there. Not all candles are equal out here. And if you take a look at this monthly uh, candle, January 31st, and you get these two, uh, you know, what I'll call narrow-ranging bars. They're still traveling with inside the body of this trading session from uh, January 31st. And you see this candle right here on May 31st when you get a close just above the body here. That's actually a continuation candle. That's called a rising three out there. The very next month, you get a small-bodied candle with inside that. You get a second rising three continuation pattern. And we have not on the monthly chart seen any kind of uh, bullish uh, or bearish reversal signal. You're coming into resistance. I say you need to be, the monthly chart is screaming that you need to be careful out here. Now, the weekly chart Weekly chart says, well, guess what? Geez, you're really right up against, you know, the resistance of that uh, down-thrusting candle, uh, which began the uh, week of May 11th out there. If I draw a black line across my screen, one might say, hey, you know, right now is the uh, time to uh, come in. So we know what we're looking at on the uh, monthly chart. On the weekly chart, I would say, okay, you know what? If you get a close below last week, 120.34, then maybe it's not going to have enough energy to make it up to the top. And on the weekly chart, I could say if you get a close below last week, then you might want to go ahead and try to step into uh, this equity. What I'd then really say is, well, not so fast. Why not so fast? Because if you take a look at this bar here from August 9th, good volume, 10.6 million shares. You need to see a close below that level, which is 114.32 if you were going to uh, try to take any kind of trade on it now. So we only got to the weekly and the monthly there. But, folks, sometimes looking at those charts just kind of clears up what the daily chart. And talk about clearing up. Let's go listen to Basil Chapman. Let's go catch the uh, Chapman wave. Stay tuned. He'll be up next, folks. Have a great Halloween, a great Thursday. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Basil Chapman has just announced that he will be hosting a one-day online master trader class. Friday, November 8th, Basil Chapman will teach you the essential fundamentals he uses when trading the market with his Chapman Wave methodology. Included in this full-day online master trader class is one month of Basil's daily newsletter service, The Opening Call, a $128 value, as well as a copy of his CD book, Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology, which usually sells for $249. Join Basil Chapman for this powerful one-day online master trader class Friday, November 8th, which will be archived if you can't attend live, where he'll give you a complete understanding of the Chapman Wave methodology and how to apply it to profitably trade any market in any time frame. For all the details and to reserve your spot while taking advantage of early bird pricing and saving $200 off the regular price, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.